Cosamauca, the land of rainbow terraces. It commands the gaze of all who visit without fail, the many-colored marvel. An endless torrent of water cascades over sheer cliffs to shape the wetlands below. To its relentless flow, all life must yield. Together with Wuklamat, we proceeded along the marshy trail, a road upon which the Dawn Serpent and his comrades once traveled. Look at those falls. Even from this distance, you can feel the weight of that water. The Isle of Han was impressive. But as you can see, Tulihyola does not want for natural wonders. The ground is swampy, so watch your step. You wouldn't want to fall into a bog. I won't. I told you I've been here before. Come on. Okanu isn't much farther. No sign of Zorolja, or that oversized lout. How much easier it would be if Zorolja were to fail here. But that isn't likely to happen. Honored guests, I am Zanuhali, elder of the Hanu. I am also an elector charged with judging which among you is worthy of ascending the throne. Without further ado, let us talk of the feat. Not so fast. Surely you couldn't be king without us. Eh, you made it after all. No need to fuss. There is no time limit for this challenge. Now, if you would allow me to proceed. It is here, in Okanu, where my people forged a bond with the Dawn Servant during our own chapter of the Tuli Yolal Saga. In homage to those events, I have prepared for you the Feet of Reeds. Reeds seem to be of great importance to the Hanu. I wonder what this feat entails. We use reeds in every part of our lives, be it as food or weaving material. But look around the nearby paddies, and you will see that this season, our crops are failing. How fortunate, then that my appointment to Elector coincided with this predicament. For surely, those who aspire to be Dawn Servant would find the matter of an ailing harvest a mere trifle to resolve. 
I, well, it is indeed the duty of a ruler to address the people's woes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do well in this, and you will earn my keystone. Why bother mucking about in the mud? When we can take the stone by force. Oh, mercy me! You are a hot-headed fellow, Bakul Jaja. Some electors may enjoy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with scrappers like you, but I refuse to entertain your base instincts. Arrangements have been made. Should you attempt to engage a feat giver in combat without their consent, word of your immediate disqualification will be sent to the palace. If you're still feeling feisty, then by all means, draw your weapon. <laughs> this contest is presided over by cowards. There's no sport in fighting you. Then we can return to the business of earning my keystone. The feat of reeds is begun. Claimants, I wish you the best of luck. Huh. The clever kitty crossed the seas to study foreign novelties. He might know tricks we don't. Tricks we can use. What of Little Miss Mittens? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Compared to the first and second promise, she's a distant third. Not even in the running. Then we see eye to eye on this brother. Being Bakul Jaja so long with me has rubbed off on you. <laughs> These allies of hers, though, they might be a problem. Damn it! I'm just as qualified to be here as they are. I'll show them. Easy now. There's no time limit, remember? Let's keep calm and think things through. Right. You're right. I won't win against that lumbering vidrol by losing my head. What do you want with me? Right. The greeting. Oh, Kali! Good. You brought your manners with you. When you know Kanu, do as the Hanu do. For a country as diverse as ours, the preservation of harmony demands that we respect the cultures of all peoples who call it home. Well, that explains your familiarity with Hanu customs. And you speak truth, of course. To live together means to learn about each other. Ah, 
I appreciate an open mind. In fact, I get the sense we've met before. You! You're Wu Klamot! Oh, what an unexpected honor for old Wu Kevu. Here I am prattling on about manners. And I've gone and insulted the third promise herself. There is no excuse for this betrayal of etiquette. Please, take up your axe and claim my impudent head. I will not. Keep your head. I hate formalities anyway, so forget about it, all right? All right, then. Consider it forgotten. How prompt. We're actually here about the Ihihana float. It's in bad shape, and we need you to craft new carrying poles and a new eye. I'm told you work with Uyuipo wood and a certain kind of stone? Uh, Abokisha? That I do. But while I would like nothing more than to offer my services, I just used the last I had of both those materials. My lumber in particular went to fixing homes damaged by the recent storm. I'll need ten days or so to restock. We can't wait that long. If you tell me where to go, I'll gather them myself. What? Send the third promise out on an errand like some common lackey? That's utterly unconscionable! A gross violation of social protocol. I told you not to worry about such things. All right, then. I shan't worry a whit. What's with your Hanu friend there? I am festival leader this season and have come along to oversee the float's repair. As strange as it may sound, Wuklamat and her friends believe the float is an arcane focus, meant to encourage the growth of our struggling reeds. Hmm. Too many Hanu have forgotten, it seems. But that is indeed the true purpose of the lifting of wings. Your education is impressive, Third Promise. Well, maybe a little. Allow me to show you where to procure Uyuipo. We can leave the Abokisha to your friends, I presume? Take yourself to Cave Kikitola or thereabouts and you should find the stones you need. I've been there once or twice. I can guide you. That should save us some time. All right then, let's get moving. Chosen one, one of your rivals is making progress. <sighs> Ihiana, you say? <laughs> Should our first choice fail to deliver, it might be wise to let this play out. <laughs> <laughs> the third-rate promise is making herself useful, after all.
Not sure we heard you right, old man. Why don't you say that again? As many times as you'd like. The Third Promise tasked me with repairing this gloat, and I'll not relinquish it to an uncultured brute like you. Much less one that can't even manage a simple greeting. We wanted to handle this in a civilized way, but we're more than willing to <laughs> kill you. We have a two-headed problem. Yes, please hurry. She's on her way back already? Stand back, Wukevu! I will protect the float! <laughs> Are you trying to be brave, little bird? I could never have repaired the float alone. Not properly. But thanks to Wuklamat and her friends, we can hold Ihihana again! This is a priceless treasure! And as festival leader, I would die to protect it! Uh, very well. If that's what you want. into that blow. Good. The better for you to understand the gulf between us. But you need more lessons. We'll carve them into your mangy hide until you cry and beg forgiveness. Your brilliant plan was to steal the float and take the credit. The so-called blessed siblings are nothing but cheats. <laughs> Your scorn is sweet music. Come, weaklings. We'll crush you each in turn. Or all together, if you like. Calm yourself, Chosen One. If you fight in earnest, this will end in a massacre. What's more, we have word that our other prospect is on the verge of success. Hmm. Then it would be foolish to expand effort, sweating nuts. <laughs> Lucky for you. Eh. Ugh, two heads. I see my mook still clings to that loathsome hope. Us, third promise. You're not dying, are you? <laughs> It'll take more than that to kill me. So, are we having this festival or not? Yes! Yes, we are!
So few have come. Patience. Once Ihihana gets underway, no Hanu will be able to resist joining in. Just so. Ukewu knows well the heart of the Hanu. Have faith, Third Promise, and climb aboard the float. It is time for the lifting of wings. Right. Off we go. Ikihana is a prayer for bountiful harvest, but this is not its only meaning. It is also an exchange of pledges between rider and bearers, a commitment to a long and fruitful friendship. Listen well, friends! The personage we bear today is Wuklamat! The savior of our beloved festival! Let your shoulders burn or your feathers fall out! But do not even think of dropping her! Ready and... Get used to this. Will empty bellies stop you from joining in the fun? Come and help us carry the float. Well, well, well. To see the day that Dawn's promise would ride our boat again. <laughs> We've not had the honor since you were here, Gulul Jaja. Right. We've enough bearers now. Onwards to Kozaduaki! Watch well, for you are about to bear witness to the true glory of Ihihana! The float draws upon our life force, concentrating and amplifying the energy. Kishaihi then receives that energy and expels it in a great burst, where it showers down upon the land to replenish its vital currents.
It worked. Like a literal charm. The float really was helping the reeds. That was amazing. To think that such a thing was even possible. Some of them still look a bit sickly. I imagine even the harvest magic has its limits. If the Hanu continue their festival tradition year after year, though, the entire field should eventually recover. Where does that leave us with the feet, then? You've got nothing to fear on that account. Our situation could never have resolved itself. The revival of even a single reed would have served to demonstrate your commitment to the task. That you recognized the nature of the float and found a near-perfect solution in Ihihana proves your dedication. What's more, I don't think I've seen the festival produce such impressive results since I was a mere chirper. Ah... <sighs> We have been lax in maintaining the float, diluting its magic, and reducing Ihihana to hollow theater. But today's events remind us of the power in tradition. Connor! I was delayed by an unpleasant encounter, but it seems I arrived at a good time. Isn't that wonderful? What? You just pour in some mystery liquid and problem solved? Stagnant ether was to blame for the reed's poor condition. I assume that was an alchemical concoction which enhances ethereal conductivity. It utilized the flowing water as an ethereal current, thereby promoting the transfer of life energies. A method I could not have devised without the education I received at the Studium, and the cooperation of my Archon allies. Archon allies? You see, Lamachi, this is why we need to embrace foreign knowledge and technology. Employed appropriately, they make light work of what would otherwise be arduous labor. There's no need to lug around heavy floats. Well, you always were the clever one, brother. Your approach was no less effective, Wuklamart. It achieved the same result. Indeed it did. And you enjoyed the festival, yes? I did! It was so much fun! Having visited your village before, I thought I knew everything about it. As it turns out, I knew very little. About the reeds, about Ihihana. Oh, 
With all I've learned this time, I feel as though I've really come to know the Hanu. I like you even more now than I did before. The feeling is mutual. And it's not just you who had a lot to learn either. I'll never look at our float the same way again. The two of you have exceeded expectations. Come forth and claim your stones. Five more to go. And on to the next. Not even a moment of celebration. That's Kona for you. A third promise? You must join us for Ikikana next season. As Dawn Servant, of course. Right. It's back to Tulihiola for now. Thank you for having us. I look forward to seeing you all again. <laughs> These are interesting times indeed. Concoction was brewed by Kona himself. It's a test vial, but it should contain the same reagents. Good work. We'll use whatever we must to win. For win we must. <laughs> 